Coming up today, the Pajadio Hotel in Buenos Aires' upscale Recoleta neighborhood. The hotel might have a small footprint, but if you subscribe to Location, 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 then this is right up your alley. The full tour starts in 15 seconds. Hi there, and thanks for watching today. I'm from the US, and I live in Vietnam, but the country that I've spent the most time in besides them over the past years has been Argentina. What I love about the city is how much parks and urban plazas play a part in life in Buenos Aires, and this M Gallery property is located directly on one of the best in the city, Plaza Rodriguez Peña, and is actually built on the former site of Peña's residence, which was incorporated into the design. For more specific info about my rate and booking method, what I think a fair price for the room would be, and my roster of videos in queue for the next coming weeks, please check out the pinned comment below. One very quick note about Argentina in general. They're in a never-ending currency crisis. Prices that you see in any of my Argentina videos are posted based on the official exchange rate to US dollars. Of course, those prices can be cut essentially in half if you use the much more popular black market exchange rates. The exterior of the hotel is modern but unassuming. Due to the smaller size of the hotel, the majority of the common spaces are located in this elongated reception area, which leads to the bar and then to the restaurant space in the rear. The decor throughout the hotel is stylish but understated, especially for an M gallery, which sometimes features some pretty over-the-top design languages. Let's take a quick look at the exact location. Located in the northeast of the city, the Pajadio is an easy 30 to 40 minute drive from Izezia Airport, the primary airport in the city, but is also much closer to Jorge Newberry, which serves domestic and regional flights. On Cajau Avenue, just a few blocks away from Santa Fe Avenue, the hotel is on the southern edge of the upscale Recoleta neighborhood. Famous for its architecture, cultural institutions, and the strangest looking library on earth. If you've ever heard about Buenos Aires being referred to as the Paris of the South, that has a lot to do with the architecture in this popular tourist area. The hotel opened in 2018, and the lobby bar and restaurant are adequately sized for its 113 rooms, and the spaces present themselves smartly. Up on the 11th floor is the small spa and fitness area, as well as the outdoor pool. This pool, which you'll see is nothing really that special, is consistently used as the cover photo for this hotel on many booking sites, and I just don't understand why. The hotel has a lot going for it. There's nothing wrong with the pool, but it's certainly not a destination in and of itself. Time to head up to my room now on the second highest floor. I always enjoyed the casino-like elevators. Felt like I won the jackpot every time I reached my destination. On the 12th, 13th, and 14th floors, the hotel is only three rooms wide. The floors below that are five rooms wide. Why am I talking about this? Of the 113 rooms here, 98 have balconies facing the park. If you're staying here, you've got to get one of these rooms. There are multiple booking categories. I chose a deluxe suite, in reality just a longer room, but specifically with a high floor park view, and it was totally worth it. I really do love deep rooms like these. If I knocked something in the room, it would have to be the variety of throw pillows and the throw runner on the bed which is just a pet peeve of mine. If it wasn't just washed, please don't put it on my bed, but I digress. I'll touch on this a bit more in my next video, 
But in general, Buenos Aires isn't exactly known for its amazing array of hotels on offer or the condition that they're in. So when I first walked into the room, I was very pleasantly surprised about not just the condition of the room, which it should be pretty good considering it's only four years old, but I appreciated the quality of the materials used. Because of currency restrictions, it's very expensive to import materials into Argentina, but the developers here were clearly set on offering a world-class product. Throughout the room, there are plenty of USB ports and outlets, but note that the majority of the outlets are not universal and they use type I plugs, the same type mainly found in Australia and New Zealand. At the desk though, there were a variety of outlets for American or European style plugs. The mini bar had an espresso machine, and at least by Argentinian standards, the mini fridge was pretty well stocked. And then behind, we have a huge expanse of closets each well outfitted with drawers or amenities which would make this room a really nice and easy place to stay for a week or two if you had a lot of luggage or were doing a lot of shopping. The creams and cool brown tones continued into the bathroom, which was laid out very nicely with a bathtub, toilet, and bidet in one room, and a separate shower on the other side of the vanities. Finally, the room's best feature, hands down, this balcony with the absolutely incredible view. While some other hotels offer a similar expansive view, very few of them in Buenos Aires will afford it from your own balcony. We're facing east, and so it was also a great place to catch some really surreal sunrises. Wouldn't you know, that's a perfect segue into a moment of marketing. I really do hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Always feel free to leave comments with questions that you may have, I reply to all of them. Also, if you're into full-length sunrises, city ambiance videos, or full-length in-flight videos, feel free to check out one of my two new channels as well. Links to both are in the description below, and I thank you in advance for considering. Time to head down to breakfast. The restaurant's a decent size, but the service and the food left a lot to be desired. Offerings are limited to the buffet on offer, and I ended up self-serving my coffee most of the time as well. I am of the unpopular opinion that, besides their fantastic beef, dulce de leche, and alfajores, Argentinian food tends to be bland and lacking in variety, and this buffet went to prove my point. If you ever wanted to see plain old ham and cheese, utilized in 65 different ways, get yourself a ticket to Argentina. And by the way, I'm not complaining. Argentina is still one of my favorite places on Earth. It just has a few quirky challenges to it. 
This back room is part of the original Pena residence. And let me point out, while the service at the restaurant was not great, in general, the rest of the staff were beyond fantastic. Need a SIM card? The front desk has them, for free. Need an exchange house recommendation? Get a card from the front desk. Have any questions while calling from the room? Expect a manager to get the answer ASAP. Really, really natural, but impressive hospitality. All right, that's all there is to write for this one, so let's get into the flip-flop score. I really loved my stay here, and of all of the hotels that I've ever stayed at in Buenos Aires, on this trip or prior, this would be the only one that I'd go out of my way of to stay at again. The lowest score here was for the food, which you might wonder why it's not even lower based on what I said. And fact of the matter is, it's all relative, and bland as it may be, they did try to do their best with the limited items on offer. Overall, a solid 90 out of 100. I really do hope that you found this video enjoyable and helpful, and give it a thumbs up if you did. Please subscribe for two new flight or hotel reviews every week. Join me next time for my stay at the Alvear Icon Hotel in Buenos Aires' Puerto Madera neighborhood.